Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I am going to talk a little bit more about some of the techniques that I use to get over my artist block. So I did another video earlier about the first technique, which is simply trying out a new medium and dealing with those different complications that come with it and challenges and adapting to that. But today I want to talk a little bit about the one thing that I found that makes the most difference for me. Uh, but I do want to say a little bit about artist block and my general disclaimer. The interesting thing about artist block is that many different people have different definitions of what it actually means and how it actually affects people. And really that's just because there's so many different types of artists and different types of people who are dealing with this. So there are so many different reasons why people go through times where they feel less creative or less capable of being creative. And so with each person, you have a different set of challenges that you have to work through and a different set of solutions that can work for you. But this one is one that really has helped me a lot in, in the past, but but I find that when I really run into artist block, the way that it affects me is that I feel really dispassionate about creating artwork and the stuff that I do do, I don't really care about. I don't like it anymore. And I don't really like the process of creating. And I still have to create, I still draw, so that is still happening, but it's just, I don't have that engagement anymore. And I've realized that usually when I, run into these larger ruts where they they go on for a lot longer than than just a week or two when they at last months and I feel like I'm in the spunk for that long or longer even those are usually times in my life when it's it's about time that my my creative skills or the way that I work or my style is going to go through a significant change and that's because I actively try to. Uh, I'm going to try to make this as logical and concise as possible, but, but a little backstory is that there is a specific point in time that I remember after I had graduated high school that I was in this kind of a rut, but it got really bad and I didn't know what to do and I stopped caring about drawing and I didn't draw at all for over a year. And it was one of the worst times of my life, honestly, because that was something that was so integral to me. And I just, I struggled, it dropped away and I didn't know what to do about it. But I eventually got back into drawing and I did try to develop skills and I, I tried to get better at that. But it's a cycle that I have fallen into a few times. But since then, I have learned one of the biggest lessons. And that is actually list making as uh, mundane and bland as that sounds I have found that utilizing lists have has been a huge changer for the way that I create art how I interact with my my own portfolio and my artwork but but when I go through these these ruts these artist block phases where I am struggling and I don't know what to do about it I write a list I look at my entire portfolio and I pick out the very specific things that I like and I write them down. And then I pick out the exact things that I don't like. What are the things that I find uninspiring? That's one of the biggest things is that, yes, there's always things that I wish that I could create better or I'm annoyed that there's an anatomy issue or whatever the case may be. But I look for things that I feel just neutral about if I did a painting and I feel nothing about it I try to analyze okay why do I not even care about this I don't like what I drew I don't care about what I drew why is that and I put those in those little lists I also look at other art as well things that other artists have created and I create a separate list similar to those as well but but I find that introspection is the thing that makes the biggest difference so at least for me, and there's probably a lot of other people that work this way as well. When I look at my full portfolio, all the pieces that I have done in the last little while, I have a certain feeling and emotion. I look at them and I see overarching issues or things that I want to improve on, styles that I want to explore or types of themes that I feel like are not coming through that I really wish they were. But when it comes time to actually creating an individual piece, I get really short-sighted instantly. I forget those things and they're no longer present in my mind. I just 
need to create a piece of artwork because that's my job. It's time to make a new one. And I, I struggle with a concept and eventually I get to a point where I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess that'll work. And I do it and I make it. And then I add it to my portfolio. And then several pieces down the line, I start the cycle over again, where I look at all of my, my gallery and I feel unsatisfied with it and frustrated. But it's because I'm not addressing it at the moment that it is actually actionable. And that's when I'm working on a piece, even if it's just down to my sketches. So these lists are so helpful to me when I'm really just unpassionate about what I'm working on. I pull those lists out and I try to make a piece that fits several of those categories and the things that I want. So one specific thing that I've been starting to notice is that when I'm imagining types of artwork to create in my head, usually when I'm listening to music, I find that that's the time that I th think the most visually. I think of things a lot more active and dynamic. I think of characters being more aggressive with their poses. They have more interesting faces. They actually have a personality behind them. But when it comes to actually drawing, I don't think about that. I don't think about these dynamic type pieces. I suddenly get these very stoic characters where they're just standing there and they're existing and it's uninspiring. And that's such a turnoff to me when I when it is time to create. And I don't know why I didn't really connect that that was such a huge issue in the way that I work because I'll just create these things and then they just have no emotional value to them and they don't connect with me on a more a spiritual level, I guess you could say. So I try to really focus on that in this particular piece. That was one of the lists or the one of the notes on my list that I wanted to specifically put into this piece. I I went through and I, I tried out several different poses. I find that that actually specifically talking about figures and being dynamic is that actually posing yourself you get a feel of what feels like it has a lot of energy to it. And you can figure out what different ways that the body can move that when you're just thinking abstractly, it's hard to come up with those things. So I came up with a pose that, that was a little bit more dynamic, but I also wanted it to really show off her arms because I had this idea where I wanted to almost have like an x-ray look of her bones. And that was another list on my things that I like out of what I do. I love showing bones, but I did find that a lot of times I take a little bit of this shortcut where I treat it almost like it's body paint, like it's painting on the skin. And I like the effect in some of my paintings, but I realized that I almost use it like an automatic crutch even where I don't spend the time to really look at exactly how the anatomy of the bone structure should be. So I let myself say, oh, well, it's it's just a painting on the skin. So it doesn't have to be accurate. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be accurate and I want to push myself that way. So that was another thing that I really focused on this one is using bones, which is imagery that I love, that I do get a lot of satisfaction from in the pieces that I've done, but push it so that it's something that I did challenge myself and I really had to work through it and figure out how to make sure that it looked accurate. And that's one of the things that makes me really excited to work on a piece is when I overcome an obstacle or I figure out a new skill. And this was one of them, figuring out more correct anatomy for the bone structure beneath. But that's one of the things that I've come to realize through writing these types of lists is that there's always all these things that I find incredibly inspiring and things that I love to create. And I do put them in my pieces, but they get obscured by all this other stuff that's just filler, really. It's like this creative filler that gets put into pieces. And I think about it when it doesn't need to be thought about and it doesn't need to be in my piece, but it covers it up and it makes it harder to see through to the stuff that I really find inspiring. And I do think that's one of the core causes for my own artist block. The things that that make me feel like not creating is, is not feeling an emotional connection with my pieces when I feel really bored with it because I'm not connecting with them. So this has really been a lot of help as far as me moving forward towards artwork that I feel a lot more satisfied with. I also think that I'm really ready to to move into an art style that that's in the future. I don't know what it is yet. 
honestly. I'm at a point where looking at my pieces, I know that I'm ready to level up. I'm ready to change it. I'm ready to search for different challenges so that I'm not I'm not using the same conventions that I always do. And I have new challenges that I really have to figure out and fight through and get excited when I figure it out. So so that's my next list maybe is trying to figure out what exactly I want to put into my new style. What things do I really want to focus on that's going to make me feel proud and excited when I look at my gallery rather than uninterested. And I say these things, but there are a lot of paintings in the recent past that I do really like. There's just a lot of them that I also feel really neutral about. So, so I'm really optimistic about moving forward with this and about utilizing these, these lists and these more introspective moments into my pieces, into every single one. That's, that's really the thing is that I, I start to coast. I forget that I have these resources that I've already made for myself, or I have these thoughts that I've put aside and I just go into the next thing automatically. But the more that I force myself to remember to look at the list before I sketch, before I draw, before I start thumbnailing anything, I need to look at these things that I've already written down and that I know are important to me. I just forget about them. And just a little recap over my very simple little tip on how to get over artist block is I will have these lists and I will look at them every time I need to start a drawing. That doesn't mean I feel inspired to draw one because that usually is what happens with artist block. And it doesn't mean that I necessarily would be capable of creating a piece I feel proud of. My execution may be off. I may be struggling with the actual technique of it, but I know that if I follow this list, I will at least get something that's taking me down the path towards my artistic goals. It won't be a diversion or something that ends up just being a filler or something that when I look back at it, I feel frustrated that I didn't even try something that I felt inspired by. And when I look at these lists, they do not have to have everything on them. They just have a couple things. One of my favorite pieces that I've ever done is Skull King and he has a very straight pose. He is not dynamic in any way, but it has several other things on my list of things that I love. And that's why it's still one of my favorites is that it checks some of those boxes off. That's what helps you be able to focus on different types of things is that the next piece can focus on these two things on your list. And then one after that can do the next three and that keeps things fresh and it keeps things focused and oriented towards the direction that you wanna go. And that is it for today. If you'd like to own a print of this piece, I do have a link down in the description that'll take you over to my art shop. I actually have her available in an extra large size as well as the two typical sizes. And I'm really excited about that because it's gonna print out really beautifully. But again, there's a link down in the description. You can follow me on Instagram where I'm trying to post a few more in between stuff and extra stuff that you'll never see over here on YouTube. And I'd love to hear from you guys as far as your techniques that you use when it comes to beating your own personal artist block. But that's about it for today. I'll see you guys at my next video. Thanks for watching.